why we care about engineering design? Well, because we need help in the process of 2D and 3D modeling. Uh, modeling things by hand could be very difficult in a 3D part. Um, and accuracy and repeatability is important. So modeling is a key aspect of computer aided design or CAD. Another thing to that we care about engineering design is to help in the process of checking assembly and functionality of the assembly, to help in the drawing or the drawings for manufacturing parts so that we can 3D print, we can have injection molding and other manufacturing methods, to help in the process of work with clouds of points for reverse engineering, help in the process of rendering, help in the process of analyzing concepts through simulating physics and things like finite elements and numerical methods, and also help in analyzing concepts through sensitivity and many other aspects. These are just a few. So in 2D modeling, for instance, when we say about when we talk about 2D modeling, we're talking about XY plane or drawings on a YZ plane where you only see one plane of the part. And sometimes one plane is enough to convey all the details because it's symmetric or axis symmetric, meaning that it revolves around an axis. So for instance, this pressure regulator, we can show everything on just one plane. So a, two, a 2D model in a, a 2D module is enough for this part to convey all the details to the engineers or the technical people that want to use it. Another aspect of 2D modeling that is important is to help us transition to 3D modeling. So we can create everything on a plane and then extrude or revolve and move to a 3D part. When we talk about 3D modeling, we can actually talk about details in X, Y, and Z coordinates. So we can have depth and height, and we can have details in every single dimension. And that is really the key point of manufacturing where we can mostly, when we say or talk about additive manufacturing, we're talking about 3D printing, for instance. We want to be able to print something that is usable in space and not just a line drawing in two dimensions. And the parts could be as complicated as an airplane or as simple as a casing. Also, we need help in manufacturing for injection molding. Injection molding, as you might learn later, or as you probably know by now, the mold requires certain angles so that you can pull the part out when it's finished and you need certain fixtures to hold the part together. Um, and it's, actually you can see that sometimes when you open the plastic parts, you can see the seams and where the mold um, was attached to the part. So creating molds and, the, and modeling the part that is going to be molded is important. So that's when we use drafting and uh, engineering design and CAD software. Also to use the parametric approach, meaning that if we create a model, but we want to change parts, we come back, we, we open up the model or the part, we open the, the file, we can edit or modify diameters, distances, thickness, etc. So that is important to keep in mind when you create a part, you can create a parametric design or parametric part, and then you change the parameters to update your part. Another aspect is point clouds. Um, if you've, I don't know if you've heard of reverse engineering, when you um, take a scanner, a high 
resolution scanner and you scan around an object and then you create the model the computational model from that point for the amount of points that you take and that is um, useful in many fields such as um, parts that are found in um, places like Egypt in Greece um, parts that are really delicate and and we want to try to understand how they're made so they can reverse engineer the part and then in a CAD software through engineering design they can reconstruct the part so that is through a cloud of points also we want to have I will simulate our physics so for instance a bracket for a motorcycle we want to design it and then we want to apply forces and see how the stress and the strain will be distributed about around the part we want to see if the part is going to break or crack or we want to see if a plate is able to sustain the weight of a car or or a part that we want to put on top so modeling the stresses and the strain and the displacement is important beforehand because you don't want to be building parts and then having the part break so ideally you can model the physics that you're going to be um, designing the part for and then editing the, the geometry or the part so that you can use it for the things that you want to use your part for and in, the, in this example we're talking about solid parts but if you want to model fluids you can also do that when you model a turbine like a 3d turbine or model a car and then you see how the flow um, is flowing through the part or around the part and checking things like drag and lift and like velocities and convection and things that might affect the performance of your design we can also use CAD or rendering or, or engineering software for rendering when you want to show the part that you created um, under different texture and different lights so rendering is also an important aspect of engineering design and all those things combined are important for analyzing concepts through sensitivity analysis so when you create a part for instance and you put it to a test and you start using it say like a piston and say the diameter and the length and the weight or those parameters are important for the part so that in an engine you can um, perform at the rpms that you want and produce the torque and, and speed and, and acceleration that you want but if you're trying to optimize the part then you want to be able to modify some, some parameters well those parameters are probably fitting back either from experimental data or from analysis you want to go back to change your model and that's where you go back to your engineering design so all those things combined help you design a better part and at the end get better engineering